What is it, Snake? The Costa Rican Sea. It is so beautiful. Costa Rica means rich coast. Please, please, get them out of my country. Them? Huh? Who was I thinking of? It was... Um... And then I... No, that is not right. But I am an angel of peace. I... I am a student. Ugh. My head! It hurts! I finally had a decent draft of the lyrics, so I showed them to Professor Galvez first. He liked them. He said I had done a superb job capturing the sense of a young girl's troubled heart. There were one or two lines I thought needed brushing up, so although he said lyrics aren't my specialty at first, he gave me some advice. Everything he said made perfect sense. When I tried putting in his changes, they made the song feel deeper, more sincere. That is the professor for you. He always has the answer. With the lyrics finished, I was ready to show Miller. He does not often take things seriously, but all of a sudden, he was saying, Paz, you have the soul of an Enka songwriter. And I did not even listen to Enka all that much. Maybe I am pretty talented after all. But still, it took so much time to write the lyrics that there is hardly any time left to rehearse before peace day. The three of us rushed into the makeshift practice studio on Mother Base to see how we sounded together. Miller strummed away with a big smile on his face. I sang the main melody, and Professor Galvez improvised a backup melody. I know the professor is smart, but is there anything he cannot do? And Miller's guitar playing sounded a lot better now that he stopped singing. But I could hardly criticize his voice. I thought I had learned the song well enough listening to the tape as I wrote the lyrics, but I had trouble with the pitch and kept missing the rhythm. I have to practice, but there is almost no time left. It is just three days until peace day. Wait, I thought there were three days left before. I went and checked today's date with Miller and the professor. The date has not changed. It is the same day. Something is strange. Am I reliving the same day? Feeling hungry, old timer? <sighs> old. Timer, I do not get hungry, no. But you have a new hamburger? Uh, you guessed it, and this time we use lamb. Lamb? Uh, you, you're you not a lamb kind of guy? A hamburger is made of beef. Whoever heard of a hamburger without beef? Yeah, but we gotta stay fresh, stand out from our competition. You're what? Just give it a try. If you say so. Not bad. But... But I cannot call this a hamburger. I thought we were onto something this time. Maybe the problem is that it looks like a regular hamburger. Gotta think outside the box. Too much baggage if they come in expecting just another burger. Let's see, cotton candy? To make it look like a sheet? <laughs> yeah! Just a minute. You really think people would eat that? What is it you are planning? Are you using me? A taste tester. A one-man focus group? Well, actually, I've already started. I got a place called, uh, Miller's Maxi Buns. You are kidding me. Well, to be honest, business hasn't been great. No one seems to like my, uh, buns. 
The Ocelot said Diamond Dog's budget did not add up. But... You don't mean to tell me. What? No, no, no. Our, our black budget's got it all covered. I'm not embezzling GMP or anything. Still, uh, let's not say anything to Snake, okay? Very well. However, Kazuhira, he takes more than premium ingredients and a clever recipe to satisfy the palate. Okay, so what do we do? The palate seeks one thing, chemical additives. Chemical additives? There is nothing mysterious or spiritual about good flavor. The tongue simply identifies specific amino acids, which the brain then recognizes as appealing. Therefore, all that is needed is to chemically isolate those amino acids and incorporate them into your products. To be clear, I speak of flavor. The rest is irrelevant. That seems a little extreme. Do not forget that I am a scientist after all. And using science for the benefit of others is a joy in seeking coexistence with nature's blessings. Not everything can remain in its natural form. When we fall ill, we must be treated. Otherwise, that very nature could cost us our lives. Agriculture is one of nature's many blessings. But through that process, we damage the surrounding vegetation. Yeah. Whether it's a massive farm or a tiny field, we always leave our mark on the land. The same is true of parasites. And for food preparation. If tapeworms in the raw meat of another animal enter the human body, they roam around trying to find their usual habitat, sometimes even eating away at the brain in their confusion. So in looking through a scientific point of view, you see the necessity for processing food. Yes, it is also sometimes necessary to eliminate certain parasites, or selectively use or even modify others. Alternatively, we could say that if a man is part of nature, the work he does is also part of it. What is important is the balance. Yeah, you're right. Thanks, old-timer. You really opened my eyes. <sighs> I fooled myself into thinking people today wanted high-quality, all-natural goods. But my favorite burgers were never about that. What they want is something like the first burger I had in America when I went to meet my dad. A Frankenburger loaded with additives. That's the America I knew and loved. I'll be back in a jiffy, old-timer. My next burger's gonna knock your socks off. Kazuhira, wait. What is important is how we balance the... Uh... Quick for a one-legged man. Frankenburger. What kind of a dive did your old man take you to? Rise and shine, old-timer. It is complete. I had our best and brightest working overtime, fine-tuning the greatest burger the world has ever known. I call it the Chemical Burger. What on earth is that color? Now, now, don't judge a burger by its color. Go on, try it. I am... not very hungry. What? Oh, I get it. Now, sure, it's loaded with additives, but each one's been approved by the WHO for human consumption. Come on, one little bite's not gonna kill you. Are you sure of that? Mm hmm. Fine. Well, what do you think? It's... 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 It is perfect. Right? Right? 
This takes me back to the taste of my youth. The neon signs on the mother road. Oh, I can see them now. So, what do you think of our signs now? And it doesn't just taste great. You won't believe how cheap it is to make. And because it's pumped up with preservatives, it won't spoil easily in regions lacking refrigerated storage or transportation infrastructure. This bad boy could even solve Africa's hunger problem. Excuse me. People will no longer fight over food or find reason to hate one another. Mankind will come together, reunited between these fluffy buns. Forget Pax Americana. Say hello to Pax Hamburgana. Pax Hamburgana. Skullface thought that destruction was the way to free the peoples of the world from American imperialism. But this is different. Tackling something head-on just makes for more conflict. Only by uniting the world can its various inhabitants truly become free. Having lived as an American parasite as long as I have, I know what I'm talking about. The Chemical Burger is poised to be the greatest liberating force the world has ever known. An ethnic liberator. Burger. Now all I need is a better brand image, starting with a name. I gotta run, old timer. I'll catch you later. Boss, let's go over the situation again. We've got another parasite outbreak in the laboratory on the quarantine platform. What is this? No idea. Damn it! What the? Shit! It's to keep it from spreading. No one's getting out. One of the researchers inside managed to isolate the parasite behind the outbreak. He faxed over his findings. Code Talker's analyzing them now. Why this new outbreak? Despite our inoculation, this is still unclear. Introducing the Wolbachia to the infected prevented symptoms during the last epidemic. The parasites lodge in the victim's throat, forming a mating pair. But the Volbachia turns the male to female. Two females can neither copulate nor lay eggs. That's why the rescue team went in with more Volbachia. But the outbreak still isn't under control. They should not be capable of laying eggs. Yet, we have a new outbreak, and the Volbachia have no effect. I pray this is not some new strain. If it is, then someone may have brought it here. If there's a spy running around. For now, we must focus on discerning the outbreak mechanism. The cases show another alarming new development. It is now even more difficult to tell who is infected. The eggs propagate out of sight. No external symptoms. One who appears healthy may be dying on the inside. What the hell happened in there? Boss, I still can't raise the rescue team I sent in. We know how to proceed if we just knew how to ID the symptoms. Finding that out is part of your job in there.
on, Snake. We've just had a transmission from inside. Here's the audio. Where's it coming from? Unknown. It cut off before we could get a fix. It all makes sense. Think he means the parasite? No way to know. But right now, that's all we've got. Hopefully he can tell us something. We'll have to close the tent behind you, boss. Don't think the infection's airborne, but... Find a source of that transmission, boss. Find our man. You never know. What is it? Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. The rescue team reported that too. Said it smelled like ripe fruit. We cannot allow the infection to spread. If anyone shows symptoms, you must put them out of their misery. That includes me. Step aside, boss. 
just want to go outside. I can't die in this hellhole. I'm not infected. I can't be right. If I am, I don't want to go out like this. <clears throat> What the hell happened? Oh. At least you're okay. What's going on? I win. I'm no snail. Damn it. Send the transmission. Seems like he had a way of IDing who's symptomatic. But what was he trying to say? Snail. Yes, of course. It all makes sense now. Do not let anyone showing symptoms get outside. As infection progresses, it triggers an overwhelming urge to get out in the open. That's the parasite controlling them. Once outside, the birds will feed on infected bodies, spreading the parasite on land.
outside! Damn it! We can't allow any contagious individuals to leave! Snake! <laughs>
Rescue team member to the exit. He's the only one not infected. Got a survivor. Unlock the door. Wait. I... I don't think I made it after all. What? You just checked him. Could it have progressed this quickly? Boss, take another look at him with the goggles. Nothing we could have done for them. We're all grateful, boss.
It's your fault! They're dead because of you! What? He's right. I killed them with my own hands. They were on your side! I'm on your side! And you turned them all to ashes! They wanted you to shoot. It was that or be burned alive. Come on. Let's get this over with. Wait. Scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. I will always be with you. Plant your roots in me. them at sea. What then? We'll make diamonds from their ashes. Take them into battle with us. A shining light to our brothers in arms. Even in death. of the infection on Mother Base. The blisters on the body were full of tiny worms. Parasite larvae, most likely. But we couldn't find any adults. It doesn't seem to mature in the body, like a sparganum. We don't know the root of infection, or what causes symptoms to develop. The infection rate, along with the number of dead, are both on the rise. If we don't find the cause, and soon... Boss. Do you remember seeing these symptoms before? 
The bodies floating around in the oil facility, the bedridden test subjects at the Devil's House. This epidemic looks just like what we've seen on our hunt for Cypher. It could be a counterplay by Skullface. That's insane. You mean they weaponize parasites? Parasites as weapons. That definitely falls under the Biological Weapons Convention. But it's something the world would never see coming. And no one's ever developed a vaccine for parasites. So this is the weapon of mass destruction Cypher was working on in Africa? It may be. But if it is, how did the yellow cake and walker gears fit in? There must be something bigger we're not seeing. Anyway, our priority now is to prevent more casualties. The medical team is studying the infection, but we can't treat anyone until we know the root cause. All we can do right now is halt the spread of infection. Oh, snake. What is it, Snake? Got something to show me, Snake? Chico, I wonder what he thinks of me. I have not seen him lately. Maybe he is angry. There is something I am hiding from Chico. Or I thought there was. It was. Um, and then I, no, that is not right, but I am an angel of peace, I, I am a student. I'm sorry, Snake, my head hurts. Could you let me rest? Oh, doctor. I have the report on the incident at the quarantine facility. Assuming the vocal cord parasite evolved, I'm sorry, underwent a mutation. The only plausible explanations are exposure to some high concentration mutagen or radiation. As you know, some of the staff at the quarantine facility were infected with the parasites. The Wolbachia prevented them from copulating, but the parasites themselves can't be removed from their host's vocal cords. Once you're infected with... Skullface's parting gift, you're stuck with it. The researchers regularly used X-ray equipment to monitor the parasites in their throats. No problem there, they kept a close eye on the radiation doses. But that equipment didn't just give off X-rays. It was also emitting beta rays. Even though that's unnecessary for the scans. See, beta rays have far worse effects on DNA than X-rays. Meaning the only logical conclusion is that someone added in a beta ray emitter to trigger a mutation. Those beta rays leaked out from inside the equipment. Because the emitter was retrofitted, the shielding was inadequate. And the person who ordered and inspected the equipment was you, Doctor. That makes you the only person with the opportunity to install that emitter. So now you're saying I sabotage medical equipment for some wild plan to make the vocal cord parasite kill everyone? Or maybe you thought it'd reveal a way to treat the parasite without using the Wolbachia. With that much to barter, I suppose some people would welcome even a pathetic cur like you. Just stop it! You'd have no shortage of buyers, but most would be happy with just the parasite. You wouldn't need to offer anything else. However, if that buyer already knew about the parasite, they'd also know that by itself, it's no longer the ultimate bargaining chip it once was. To sell to that buyer, you need to throw in a bonus, a way to one-up it. There's only one buyer who'd be after that. <laughs> Emmerich, we record all communications on Mother Base. That includes radio transmissions to and from homemade devices. You've been in frequent contact with people in America. A private biotech company. A client of which is DARPA. And they are connected to Cypher. You made a deal with Cypher. You offered them a new parasite in exchange for your safety. This is the only place in the world where the vocal cord parasite still exists. And you used it as a testing ground. Tried to resurrect their bioweapon. But your plan to obtain the parasite has failed. 
Your bullshit ends now. And don't think you're leaving here alive. Twelve hours after exposure to the blood of a symptomatic colleague, I found myself making my way up the stairs to this room. And I am not alone. Everyone who's infected, we've all come up here wanting to get outside. I know full well I mustn't leave, given the possibility I'm infected. Yet, I can't contain this urge I feel inside me, like the alcoholic who tries to make any excuse for one more drink. Every step I took up those stairs filled me with this sense of bliss. I still have all my wits about me. It took no time at all to rewire the electronic lock and open the emergency exit. Then, just as I was about to set foot outside, I finally realized what was going on. This desire for freedom is not my own, but that of the vocal cord parasites inside me. They want the ravens to feed on us, pecking us to death, attracted by these sweet secretions. They have mutated to facilitate this. The sweet smell is powerful enough to attract even a species with such a weak nose. So, before the parasites take complete control, I must. Most of the staff in here are already infected. At least, everyone I've looked at is. Infection with this parasite causes a high fever in the pharynx. I have modified a pair of night vision goggles to react only to this temperature range. With these goggles, you can identify who is infected. Other infected will, like me, feel compelled to make it outside. If the ravens get their meal, they'll head for land next. That cannot be allowed to happen. The whole idea of the vocal cord parasites was that they'd only copulate once exposed to a specific language over time. But the parasites infecting our men in the laboratory laid their eggs straight away. The larvae were eating their lung tissue almost immediately. What kind of mutation was it? Those who were infected and cured still carried the vocal cord parasites in their throats. They were still there, but the males had been rendered female by the Polbachia, and copulation could not occur. So we thought, but it is the Volbachia that mutated. Not the parasites? You remember I told you the Volbachia attempts to maximize its number of female infected hosts? Yes, hence the male-to-female transformation. Precisely. But other Volbachia strains use different methods. Cytoplasmic incompatibility, killing the males, and parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis? Aphids? Aphids use that to reproduce via females only. Very good. The females lay their eggs without a male present, creating clones of themselves in explosive numbers. Parthenogenesis was originally a means for an organism to take maximum advantage of abundant resources by increasing its numbers. Certain strains of Albachia forced this to occur, to create more and more infected females. And that's why our men develop symptoms in the blink of an eye. Wolbachia, causing parthenogenesis, is common in parasitic wasps. Of course, the Wolbachia I introduced to your men did not have this characteristic. 
but I believe the mutation. Whatever it was, caused it to force parthenogenesis in its host, the vocal cord parasites. The Volbachia we used to prevent egg laying became the agent of limitless reproduction. There's something else. The symptomatic infected in the laboratory all wanted to get outside, even knowing there was napalm waiting for them out there. You said the parasites made the Mac that way, but parasites controlling humans. Is it possible? Parasites altering the host's behavior is a common occurrence in the world of nature. Long ago, the vocal cord parasites had this ability. But even I never foresaw they might control humans. Until I heard the things your man said. You mean the researcher on the top floor? The bit about, I'm not a snail? Yes. Among parasitic worms, there is a genus called Leucochloridium that uses snails as intermediary hosts. As you know, snails prefer dark, gloomy environments. But once parasitized by leucochloridium, they desire to be in the light. And that is not all. The parasitic worms thrust themselves into the snail's antennae, making them swell to abnormal size. The snail, meanwhile, frantically wiggles its antennae as the parasites squirm inside. The swollen, wriggling antennae soon resemble caterpillars. I don't get it. It is so they can be eaten by birds. Leucochloridium needs a bird as its definitive host. To breed, they require their snail host to be snapped up by a predator. So they make the humble snail appear to be a delicious caterpillar and lead it to somewhere in open sight. So you mean the staff trying to get outside? Was so the birds could pick at them. The parasites altered their mental state, making them crave higher places and to be outdoors. I can only surmise that both the Volbachia and the parasites mutated before the ancestors of the vocal cord parasites infected humans. Their hosts were birds. What we saw in the laboratory was some throwback to that time. The parasites attempting to make birds their intermediary hosts. It sounds insane. A prey mantis that is host to a parasitic hair worm will dive into water and drown itself. Just so the hair worm can lay its eggs in water. Rats infected with Toxoplasma gondii lose their instinctive caution and run right up to cats. Just some of the many ways parasites control the host. But we're humans. Surely our minds are too complex for that. I thought just the same. Free will is what makes us human. So it never occurred to me that the parasites could be controlling the symptomatic. But the mood. The will of a person can be easily affected by the balance of their cerebral substances. Take the toxoplasma I mentioned. It does infect humans, and it is thought the infected develop a more reckless attitude. Hmm. But to think that mutations occurred in both the Walbachia and its parasite hosts... Your observation is most apt. Both mutations occurring at once indicates the presence of a powerful mutagen. I see. Keep working on narrowing down what it was.